We'll now call to order the special meeting for Lompoc City Council of Wednesday, February 16th, 2022 to order. Roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Council Member Vega. Here. Council Member Starbuck. Present. Council Member Cordova. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Jeremy Ball. He will be arriving but late. Mayor Janelle Osborne. Here. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, this evening is the second public hearing regarding community input on the composition of districts for city council offices and the redrawing of election district boundaries and introducing of the ordinance number 1690 parenthesis 22 amending section 2.06.030 of the Lompoc Municipal Code to adopt a city council electoral district map based on the 2020 census. For those of you listening, our council member Ball has joined as we said he would, so welcome. All right, um, Madam Clerk, uh, would you like to kick this off? Uh, thank you. So this is actually the fourth public hearing, the second hearing after the draft maps. We do have uh, National Demographics Corporation. We have Dr. Phillips here to give us one more um, presentation. And then we are asking for council to hold the public hearing <clears throat> discuss the draft maps, maps, provide direction on any revisions, hopefully select a map and introduce by title only ordinance number 1690 parentheses 22. And with that, I would like to have Dr. Uh, Daniel Phillips come forward and give us the presentation. Thank you, Ms. Hatton, and uh, good evening, Mayor and Council members, and uh, oh, thank you. So I'm back one last time to help guide you through this process of redistricting. And so just as a reminder of uh, what has led to this point, there have been four total hearings as required by state law. We had two before any draft maps were posted and we have had two uh, subsequent to the postings. And so tonight would be the last of those. And so the, uh, the idea is after this final public hearing to have a first reading of an ordinance to adopt one of the, the plans on the table here. And then you will have the second reading and formal adoption at a regular city council meeting on March 1st. I've gone over these criteria quite a bit in the past, so I'm not going to uh, dwell on, on these too much, only to emphasize that you have the federal laws, those three requirements that come from, from the Congress or the Supreme Court. You have the California criteria from the new Fair Maps Act that is rank order of priority. And so you'll see the most important ones are at the top. And um, ideally, you'd want to try to satisfy all of those, but you would prioritize the, the, the higher order ones. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see other traditional redistricting principles that you may or may not want to consider. And uh, when I go through each of the plans, I will discuss how each of the plans perform on, a, on all of these criteria. So option one is to accept the current districts with no change. This would result in a total population deviation of uh, 6%. Uh, something I, um, I have mentioned in the past, but I, I didn't mention last meeting, was that these population figures are all uh, prisoner adjusted. So they're not, they're not taking into account the prisoner population at uh, the federal prison. So I uh, just want to clarify that. There are no voting rights concerns with the districts in their current form, as the districts are effective in electing candidates from protected classes. All districts are contiguous. They're, um, as far as we know, they, there, is no, um, there is no record of the districts dividing neighborhoods or communities of interest. 
there, uh, there may be an issue with the boundaries. Some boundaries are not as identifiable because there's some, uh, some small diversions from straight lines in uh, certain places along the, the boundary between one and three, as well as between two and three and three and four. But besides that, all districts seem to be compact. And um, the one issue uh, with future growth is that, like I said last meeting, that most of that future growth is anticipated in districts one and three, but the most underpopulated district is actually district four. So ideally you'd want the, the more underpopulated districts to be where that growth is expected. So option two is to modify the current districts with some minimal changes. And the only changes really here would be to uh, even out those lines so that you don't have those, uh, those small deviations and you can have uh, straight lines uh, throughout the plan. And this would lower the deviation to 4.7%. And there would be no appreciable difference from the current districts in terms of voting rights, contiguity, uh, neighborhood or community of interest integrity or compactness. There would be a very small uh, percentage of the city's population shifting to an earlier election, but no one sh shifting to a later election. And so the, uh, there would be no difference from the current districts in terms of continuity of office or the core of each district. And you would have the issue again where the most underpopulated district is not where the bulk of the future growth is expected. Option three is to modify the current districts with more moderate change. This would lower the deviation even more to 4%. There would be no appreciable difference in all those criteria I mentioned before. And the idea here is for the boundaries to be a little more easily identifiable by shifting the boundaries to uh, different streets that are more, um, perhaps more recognizable or are easily trafficked or heavily trafficked, like A Street uh, being the boundary between districts three and four and the Highway 1 being the boundary between districts 3 and 2. So if you were to do this, there would be a small percentages of the city's population shifting to different elections, 1.8 to an earlier and 2.7 to a later. Uh, there would be no difference in terms of uh, continuity of office or the core of each district. And this would ha also have the benefit of uh, making districts one and three the most underpopulated districts, which would fit with the expectation of uh, future growth in, in, in those districts. Lastly, the uh, option four is to have a more significant change, and this would raise the population deviation to 8.4%, but that is still under the 10% threshold of uh, constitution, constitutional equal population. And so the, the idea here was to uh, shift the boundaries between uh, districts two and four so that it follows a more major street. But the, uh, there would be higher percentages shifting to different elections under this plan. And uh, district two would be the most underpopulated district when you would want that to be one and three, ideally. So a lot to consider there, but I'm happy to take your questions and, um, and hear about what you might um, prefer as one of these plans. Thank you. All right, as mentioned at the last meeting, this first go round of questions uh, is to staff. Um, we shouldn't really be deciding on a map yet because we should give one more round of public comments to provide us input and then after public comments, have a deeper discussion about map preferences. So uh, again, any questions for uh, either Dr. Phillips or staff regarding the maps before us? Councilmember Ball. So I probably have a few questions, but I think it might make sense for the deeper discussion a little okay. after comment. 
Awesome. Anybody else before we go to public comment? All right, so thank you, Dr. Phillips. Um, we obviously will have some additional questions for you after we listen to public comment. If you would like to speak to any of these, you're welcome to come to the podium. You will have three minutes to speak. You also may call in. The number to call is 805-875-8201, 805-875-8201. And you will also be given three minutes. And uh, before we see if any of that happens, again, if you want to speak, go ahead and come to the podium. But I will ask our city clerk, did we have any written communications? No, ma'am, we received nothing. And just so that everybody knows, we never received any um, draft maps from anybody okay. but national demographics. Okay, great, thanks. So while we wait to see if there are any calls, um, just to remind the public, these maps are something that will be in place for the next 10 years. So this is your last opportunity to give us input and direction before we decide on a final map that will be confirmed on March 4th. So again, the maps we decide on um, and put forth will be in existence for 10 years. All right, seeing no one rise and having no written comment and no phone calls coming in, we will go ahead and close public comment and bring it back to council. And I believe Councilmember Ball, you had questions, cool. so. Yeah, for the doctor, if you would. Just trying to break this down to make, try to make it a little more simple. So based upon all the, the regulations and you know the hierarchy of the federal stuff, the local stuff, the state stuff, and then the things that we might consider, of those, what, what is the, the top item that we should consider from those regulations? That's, uh, well, I know that's a moving target, but if we were yeah. to just simplify it and bring it back to, you know, starting with number one, with equal population, should I, should I treat that as kind of a top level ideal situation for this discussion? Yeah, so it's, uh, all the plans are equal population as far as the, um, as far as the courts have ruled anything under 10% is considered a presumptively equal population. So all else being equal, it is preferred to have a lower deviation just so that um, it's, it's closer to exactly equal representation, but it's, it's, not, it's not legally required that you have the, the lowest possible deviation as long as it's under 10%. So that, that would be, um, priority number one, uh, all else being equal, but um, like I said, all these plans I would say are considered equal population, and all the plans satisfy the Federal Voting Rights Act, and um, there's no concerns about racial gerrymandering under any of the plans. They're, they're all contiguous. They're all, um, as far as we know, not dividing neighborhoods or communities of interest, so it the next one would be easily identifiable boundaries, and we do see some differences in the plans when it comes to that. Uh, compactness, there doesn't seem to be much difference. They all seem pretty compact. And then you have the other uh, principles where there are some differences, like when it comes to voter shifting or uh, future population growth. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I, I think for me, um, and again, I'd love to have some discussion on this, but since we do check so many boxes and there's not that many things for us to stress about being too close to the edge on something or not getting it right, I, I keep going back to equal population. This is a 10-year uh, choice that we have to make, and ultimately, if, if everything else is sort of in good standing, um, for me, I, I'm leaning towards equal population. I think as a representation of our community, we should have as close to uh, equal numbers in our districts as possible, but that's just to open the discussion. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Vega. Um, thank you so much for the information. Having been on this before, I think that we're in a good spot right now. I think what your presentation says that we're really everything is equal, as equal as can be. Uh, as far as the deviations, they're very minor. Uh, what we have here, we're in a unique spot where people that are in districts know which district they're in already. Um, you can change the lines if you wanted to make it clear, but it wouldn't change anything because people really don't have it memorized, and I think probably 
in your presentation, it looks like no current change is really necessary uh, unless someone wants to change it just for the sake of change. I think the, the fact that it's tied to the 10-year census plan, and if you're trying to predict 10 years in, ahead of time, it's pretty futile. You know what I mean? That's a long time. You can say something about the growth in the north, but if it never happens, it never happens. So I think the fact that it's tied to the census is is a weak point, you know, because in 10 years from now, if you have to bring out your crystal ball, I think what it's gonna, uh, what's gonna happen here is everybody with their districts, because of the minor deviations, I think for voting rights and everything, it's gonna be up to the individual candidates and the city to actually put out the criteria and the information to the people to encourage them to vote. It's not a matter of, uh, we're so close here that it's, it's, it's really, uh, uh, it's almost would be considered gerrymandering in a certain way, you know, if somebody wanted to lean toward uh, a, a significant change, you know. So I think that my, my vote would be to stay the same because people are already used to their districts. Uh, and, and it seems like the deviation is pretty close. So thank you very much. Um, so I absolutely appreciate what both of you are saying. And so with, given that, I, I look at these and I... I Automatically for me, I, I threw out maps three and four. Um, I do like three and how much it cleans it up, but the shift to a later election is, is so large that I, I pulled it, even though it was a better population deviation. I do think there is some consideration that should be given to option two. It does improve our deviation and it does shift the lines um, enough so that those little bump outs are cleaned up so that you can say to someone it's north all the way, way across divides one, two, and three and um, cleans out, you know, the stair steps make sense but those little tiny pop outs um, kind of are confusing for those individuals and it shifts those individuals to an earlier election so they aren't pushed back, they're actually brought forward so it's actually an advantage to those. Um, so, you know, I would consider um, option one and option two, and I lean towards option two just for cleaning up lines and, and making it a little cleaner um, as far as making it easier to describe and taking care of those little tiny bump outs, but that's that's where I'm at. I, I'm, I'm okay with staying with option one, but I do kind of like the idea of doing some cleanup. Um, I really did like the full cleanup of option three, but it, it goes too far with shifting too many to a, a later election for me. Any other ideas, thoughts, input? Yeah. Councilmember Baum. So I would, uh, you know, again, we've got to thread a needle here. I, I guess my only uh, point on considering map three is that in the situation where, uh, say in options one and two, district four is, in both of those, is the underpopulated district. And so in 10 years, say that we did have growth to the north and we did have that, uh, the build out in district three, 10 years from now, that deviation is going to grow if I'm if District 4 is already underpopulated. So for me, um, I don't just necessarily want to throw that out. Uh, I do understand your point about the later election, but that that's stuff happens all the time when they do redraw lines. So again, if we're if our aim is to in 10 years to look back and say that we've had as close to equal representation in terms of the population size, then that is just something I that I wish that we would consider. Um, but that's just my two cents. Sure. Councilmember Cordova. I will support option one or two um, with my preference leaning towards two. Um, as mentioned by Mayor Osborne, I think it cleans it up just enough to make it very clear um, as to the lines for our residents and um, it doesn't create uh, too much of a deviation. Um, and it actually um, improves our total population deviation. It does, and the only thing it does is kind of increase uh, District 4 by 0.2%, but not drastically enough. So uh, again, Councilmember Ball, I do see and absolutely agree that option three does give you that that balance um, I just I think given we're so new to this just cleaning up the lines would be advantageous rather than making a huge shift and hope that we haven't made that mistake by not going with option three councilmember Starbuck in option two map what is the voter disenfranchised on that that map 
I, I would say no voter, no voter would be dis disenfranchised. There would. Well, there's a number. That's that was the number I was looking yeah. for. Yeah, though, it moves it point forward. Point zero two. Yeah, it moves it forward to an earlier election yeah. instead of a later. No, no, I understand. I okay. just want to see the number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compared to three, where it's a huge shift of, granted, one point eight go to an earlier election, but two point seven go to a later election. So it's a much more drastic shift of of when um, people would vote compared to option two. Don't wanna rush anybody, so feel free to think through. Councilmember Vega. Are we open for a motion or what are we doing here? Um, doing we are open for a motion, but I wanted to make sure that this discussion had time for everybody to think through kind of the, yeah, the two gotcha. priority emotions gotcha. that are kind of out there and considering council member balls you know points and and so again um I okay think, i think that gotcha. just taking a few seconds to make sure that want to have a moment of silence or what? <laughs> we can't be too silent because then um city clerk's recording stops so and I'd, I'd like to make a motion because it sounds like uh, we want a little minor change in cleaning up, and I'm okay with the clarification that you put out here. Okay. You know, I don't think that it's drastic. And, you know, Council Member Ball, you know, it's just unfortunate that we have to tie it to a 10-year plan. So I do understand, you know, we're talking, we're trying to predict the future, which, uh, and it's pretty hard. It's pretty difficult. I don't agree with the way we're tied to the census, but that's just me. I think that it should be done every five years instead of 10. 10 years is too far. But I would like to make a motion that we... The council goes with uh, map number two, okay, which would clean up the lines. I believe that was one of the motions that everybody kind of had a consensus here of either one or two to make the lines a little clear. I think that that would be my motion that we go with, with that unless someone has a different opinion, but that's my motion. Thank you. Do I have a second on that? I'll second it. Awesome. So we have a motion and a second. Um, we still have a chance to have any additional clarifications, questions answered. So if anybody has them, yes. My microphone is <laughs> Oh, darn. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no hey. legal advice because your mic wasn't working? I'll echo for you. I just, <laughs> uh, I just need to state for the record something for this ordinance. So if the motion is to choose map number two, mm -hmm. What we're going to do is take the map that's called minimal change from current plan, so that's right. number two. We're going to take the map that has the gold lines, not the black lines, mm -hmm. and we're going to attach that to the uh, to be exhibit A in ordinance number 1690-22, and that and we'll bring that back for adoption on March 1st. That will be what happens if the motion passes. Great. Thank you for clarifying that for us. All right, so we have a motion and a second. And again, any additional questions, concerns? All right, Council Member Ball. I was just because I'm still learning on this part. Are, is, and again, I don't think this group's gonna go that way, but I'm just curious. So when it comes to shifting an election, you know, prior and later, is that pretty common in the redistricting process? Or is that kind of getting close to, is that what a lot of groups shy away from is not wanting to intrude upon shifting later and earlier votes yeah it's um it's up to the the board our council to decide how important of a factor they want to make that um if the districts are not equal population or they aren't in compliance with the fair maps act then there does have to be um shifts in uh, in voters in order to comply with the federal and state requirements. And so I've, um, I, I ho hopefully have explained that there are, your districts are very much in compliance with the federal and state requirements. And with the possible exception of the easily identifiable boundaries, but that would, that would potentially be mollified by going with option two. So, in that sense, you, um, given that, let, let's just say for the sake of argument, all of these uh, under headings one and two are satisfied. So it really comes down to how the 
the council are, wants to weigh these other factors. And so some might weigh voter shifts higher than future population growth, and some might do the opposite, but that's, that's up to you. And just out of curiosity, is there a chance, and again, this is way out in the future, but in 10 years they do another census, and if we, you know, our deviation has grown considerably, isn't it pretty much a fact that we're probably going to have to shift the lines a little more dramatically, and that is going to do the same thing that we're trying to avoid now, which is shift voters to a prior or a later election? Yeah, yeah, so, so there, there will have to be voter shifts if you have to redistrict to meet equal population standards. I mean, unless, the only exception would be if the, uh, the most populated and the least populated district um, are on the same cycle. So you would just move the line between those districts and since they're on the same cycle, there would actually be no voter shifted to a different election year. So that's, that's possible, but I, I would expect that District 1 would become the most overpopulated district in 2030, uh, given what we've discussed. And so um, if the, the least populated district were, say, 2 or 4 in 2030, then um, I don't have it at the top of my mind which years those districts are, are up, but um, I believe two and three are on the same cycle. No. Two and three are in the same cycle. Yeah, yeah, two and three are on the same cycle. And so, they're up in this, this, this election cycle, so they would be yeah. the earlier. Yeah, yeah, so let's say one is the most overpopulated and four is the most underpopulated in 2030, then um, the, the difficulty is there's a district in between, and so there would have to be, um, there's no way to act, draw a boundary that just shifts between those two districts. Do you see what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I just wanted to point out is that whether we consider it now or down the road, there's a good chance that we're yeah. going to shift voters. Yeah. You know, thank you. Yeah, and the, the county just did this with their redistricting, so it's almost always, it, it almost always happens when, when you do uh, redistrict. Mm -hmm. Council Member Starbuck. Before the vote here, could you put map two up real quick? Uh, it's hard to see on that. I was looking at the boundary on East Ocean where the little proposed boundary does, is, are we following East Ocean as that boundary in D Street? So are you talking about the boundary between districts three and four? Yes. Yeah, so that. It's just an incomplete yellow line there on the, that little change and I. Yeah. So it, it does follow East Ocean for like a block or so, and, and the idea is it just gets the whole Civic Center. We're, we're basically knocking out that one little block yeah. of four in, that, in this drawing is what I'm seeing here. Yeah, real. yeah, and there's no, there's no one who lives there. It's just to unite the whole Civic right. Center in one district. And then the other place that's getting knocked out is between three and two. That little bump out is getting pushed over. Yeah, right but, there. but that would be the same cycle, like you right. said. And then the other one that gets cleaned up is the one between yeah. one and three along north. Yeah, mm -hmm. And that's okay, but I think it's a good question, and describing it to the public, if it is difficult to see, at least they know the city. I, 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 okay, we, we got it, all right, okay. Any other questions, clarification? All right, so we have a motion on the floor. Let's go ahead and vote. And that passes 5-0. Thank you so very much, Dr. Phillips, for You're the hard work on this and uh, for providing at least some things to consider and projections for the future so future councils kind of see where things might need to go if we do have the growth we hope to have. Thank you to my fellow council members for um, that and for those of you that came out in attendance this evening and, uh, and, and participated in the last one, we really appreciate it. Really hope you engage in 10 years because we hope to see an, enough change that it will be a much longer meeting with much more discussion. So we will now adjourn this meeting to the next Lompoc City Council meeting of a regular 
meeting at 6.30 p.m. on March 1st, 2022, where we will have a final vote on this. Have a good evening. Thank you.